Hi, I'm Ren. Hi, I'm Sam. Hi, I'm Britt. And you're listening to the T Swift Sisters podcast. Welcome back, everybody. If you couldn't already tell, we have a special guest with us on today, my sister, my other sister, not Mia, Brittany. Ew, that's <laughs> so disgusting, me calling you Brittany. I don't think I will ever do that again <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> I was honestly going to do my intro as Thithi and just be like, that's that's actually my name. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, from here on out, she'll go by Thithi, at least to me. You guys can keep calling her Brit or whatever you want, but to me, it like... It, it's just weird. Like, it's just wrong. All right. It's so. okay. I almost called myself Tosh in the intro. I don't know what I did, but <laughs> That's what the little pause was. I was wondering. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, obviously, you've told us your name. Tell us your favorite Taylor Swift era, how long you've been a Swifty for, and or what made you a Swifty. And important to note here before we start this episode today, Didi is my older sister. Because I feel like it's going to come up in the conversation a little about where Taylor Swift came from. I know it's a, a debate that we have with our dad a little when he tries to ask who was the OG Swifty. So go ahead. Okay, so I was actually, I was going to give it to you and just say that you can be the OG Swifty because all of the additional just love for Taylor Swift can is just coming from you. And I, I can't, I can't hold on to any of it. Um, and also, I felt really old thinking about these questions because I was trying to remember, like, when did I start listening to Taylor Swift? And um, technically, I was in middle school. Um, and I know... I know that I love debut because I like know all the songs. I liked all the songs. But I think when I first realized I was a hardcore Swifty was when Fearless came out. Mm-hmm. I was a freshman in high school and just like doing carpools, listening to Hey Steven and just being like, oh my God, like so many cute boys. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, this is definitely for me. I mean, that's a really good like time in your life to be discovering Taylor Swift when you're literally going through the motions of what the song 15 is about. Like for us, we were like, we can't wait to get there one day. But now I look back and realize that you were literally turning 15 like a month after this album came out. Yeah. So like Taylor Swift is only like, what, three, three to four years older than me. So basically she would like make her album and then they would come out and then I would be going through whatever she was going through. So it was like perfect for me. So basically every era she's been in, I'm like, I'm also going through this. (laughs) But um, I think my favorite Taylor Swift era is like so many of them uh, well we have there's a there's a debate right so we have lamer yes we ask favorite era but it's really favorite era as in taylor swift era as a person slash Mm -hmm. album era okay okay so i'm super loving the aesthetic for midnights and like for her like she just seems so herself and like genuine and also i just love the 70s aesthetic which has been such a thing for like so many of her music videos and the tiktok videos um and it's just something i've always tried to achieve and failed at um and then i think probably my all-time favorite um is speak now Oh, just like even I was thinking about it earlier. Um, I didn't even have the Speak Now CD. Actually, I think Renee burned the Speak Now CD. Yeah, our Speak Now CD. It wasn't burnt. It wasn't like my CD that I burned. One of the girls in the group, um, she purchased the CD and then burned it for all of us. So we never Mm -hmm. actually purchased that CD. And I don't know, like. Looking back on it now, I don't know why we never purchased it. I just know that she gave us each a copy. And then the copy that we had actually cut off the Dear John yeah. lyrics. Do you guys yeah. remember that? It 100%. Went to like the second, I think there's like two bridges in Dear John. I think it goes through like the first bridge and then like cuts off and it would start another song. And it was like until we started like actually getting music on like downloading songs on our iPods or something that we actually found out that there was a whole other like three minutes to Dear John that we never knew about. Yeah, that's so funny because that's exactly 
what, like how I would listen to it. I never heard the full Dear John. I think it would skip to me. So it would just be like in the middle of Dear John, you, <laughs> the start of me. And I'm like, hmm, this is interesting. But I thought that's how yeah, it was. It never <laughs> sounded too weird. Like it was like weird, yeah. but then like you listen to it so many times that you got used to it. And then it kind of just like faded into the next song. So you're like, oh, that's totally right. <laughs> 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 yeah I remember I was like in the car and I had downloaded like finally like music on my on my iPhone and um like the whole and I was obsessed with Dear John I had like a whole music video in my head and then like the next version started playing and I was like oh <laughs> the days of the burn copies of CDs that's yeah I still have my I speak now burned copy For real? you have your yeah. burned copy that's so amazing yep. I don't have it, but I do now have, thanks to Mia, um, mm-hmm. the original Speak Now like mm-hmm. CD because I was like, I can't just not have it for my collection. A question for you guys, because I was researching before the show and I need to know if I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so the Speak Now TV is Speak Now Taylor's version or is there a speak now tv because this entire time that you guys have been saying speak now tv i'm thinking like oh my god there was like this super cool like i'm picturing a tv with like taylor swift on it are you thinking of like those like disney tvs that they used to have um yes and then just also like 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 the vault music like youtube style and like coming this is what i've been envisioning this entire time and i was googling today and i'm i was like Speak now, Taylor's version, idiot. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's so creative. Um, well, we can we can credit this to a pregnancy brain. Um, <laughs> for those of you listening, my sister is carrying my beautiful niece and Swifty to be Kaya. Um, hmm. There was definitely never a television set that was the <laughs> to speak now. So when we say speak now, to own speak- it. Yeah, we would, it would have been in our room. Like, let's be serious. We literally <laughs> shared mean, a room. I mean, mine didn't exist. And I was like, oh, it's cute and purple. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we shared a room when Speak Now came out. So, like, we definitely would have had it. But Speak Now TV is directly referring to Speak Now Taylor's version. Cool. Cool. Anytime we say, like, Fearless TV, Red TV, anything TV, it's Taylor's version. SNTV is just the acronym for Speak Now, Taylor's version. Cool. Um, I know that now. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, honestly, like, aside from that, acronyms in general in this fan base are so hard. Like, we've been over it a few times because the whole friendship bracelet making thing now. And in general, people, like, will shorten long songs with acronyms which is like fine but they're like okay people making friendship braces are using some of the acronyms as like the bracelet because the song is too long to spell out on the bracelet and so like for all too well there's all too well 10 minute version from the vault taylor's version sad girl autumn version recorded at long pond studio that is literally one acronym I can't. That's, no, that's too, I can't keep up. That's why I'm like, that's I like all, all of that was one song. How is that on a bracelet? That it has to be like a lanyard, bro. No, it's yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I saw today on Twitter somebody posted like a bracelet with a super long acronym. I'm not sure if it was that one or not. It was. Mm-hmm. I just like I didn't even take time to look at the acronym. I just saw the picture and like if you're watching the YouTube video version of this, you can see it. But if you guys are pod only. Um, I'm sorry in advance. The the picture's like this long, right? Like the bracelet and the girl's like, you can wrap it around twice. And I was like, bestie, that's what? literally a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> like people are making friendship bracelet rings. Bestie made a necklace out of this acronym. Like that's how long it was. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, Titi. And then the last question we have for you before we get on with our news stories today is what really made you a Swifty? Like, how did you discover Taylor Swift? Because our, like, which is why we have this argument with my dad about who became the Swifty first is because we discovered Taylor Swift on our own, each of us, like in different, you know, 
realms. So how did yours happen? I like, I honestly don't have an answer for you. Um, I cannot remember for the life of me what, like, if I know for a fact, like, I became a hardcore Swifty when Fearless came out because I was like, this is my life and I'm going to be super dramatic from now. But um, when debut came out and like two drops on my guitar and um, I was just listening to uh, Picture to Burn, our song. I literally just watched the music video. Um, So like, I know that I was listening to that and that I like love the music videos, but I can't like, there's not like, I wasn't, there's not a point in time where I was like, oh my God, like this human is Taylor Swift. It was just like, wow, I like, super love this song and I'm going to listen to it a million times. Yeah. So I get it though. Like, I think maybe at that time, like Taylor Swift just didn't make like the biggest impact on your life. So like, you don't really remember how you discovered Taylor Swift. You just kind of like, at this point, you're like, what is life without Taylor Swift music? Like I woke up one day, discovered the song. And now here we are 17 years later. <laughs> Literally, we have to give credit somewhere to mom because we mom would take us to school. And like the reason why we listened and I'm sure, Sammy, it's the same with your mom. This The reason why we listened to Taylor Swift so much and love the music so much is because our moms were willing to play the CD as the only thing in the car. Like instead of the radio, get in the car. Mom, fearless. Turn it on. Let's go. <laughs> That's 100 percent true. And my mom was a. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Illegal downloading music queen. <laughs> was she a LimeWire yeah. queen? <laughs> she was a total LimeWire queen. So she downloaded every song for me when I didn't get it from you know a friend or anything. It was mm-hmm. from her. <laughs> so she was just feeding the obsession. But it was super relatable what you said about the music videos because I feel like that's how that was like my stepping into becoming a hardcore Swifty because I loved her videos. I was obsessed with them. Like the drama, the storytelling. That's so fun. good. In um Picture to Burn, I just like I was like watching it and uh I was like, oh my God, Abigail's in this music video. Their acting is so hilarious. It's right. So- and then like the hardcore side bangs. I literally had those hardcore side bangs. Like <laughs> I was like, this is not who I am. <laughs> All right. So jumping into Taylor Swift news kind of staying on topic here and bringing up uh, Speak Now, Taylor actually released the names of the six vault tracks that will be featured on Speak Now TV. So we have Electric Touch featuring Fallout Boy. We're definitely going to have to like get into this a little. When Emma Falls in Love. Emma? I, can, I know. I Can See You. Hassles Crumbling featuring Haley Williams, Foolish One, and Timeless. I think I'm most surprised about the guests on the, like the features on these vault tracks. Um, I also wanted to point out before we get into it, um, what Taylor said about this before we kind of like pick it apart. But she wrote um, as part of her caption when she released the vault tracks, she said, since Speak Now was all about my songwriting, I decided to go to the artist who I feel influenced me most powerfully as a lyricist at that time and ask them to sing on the album. I recorded this album when I was 32 and still growing up now. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> she kind of mentions that like they were like bigger artists, I guess, influenced her at the time, you know, Fall Out Boy, Haley Williams. It does. It's very like 2009, 2008 yeah, totally time period. But what are your thoughts about them? Like being on the album slash like, what does it mean for the actual songs? Do you think like they're going to be grungier, you know, maybe a little angsty? Okay. Trying to figure out how it would like, because I was like looking at like the Speak Now album, and then trying to figure out how like these songs would like m- like melt in nicely with it. And so I like look at Electric Touch featuring Fall Out Boy, and I'm like, where the hell is that gonna go? I have no, like, I don't know. I just picture like I'm going down, down. <laughs> like, I don't know how that fits in. <laughs> I I think I actually like as we started talking about it I realized that Mia 
I don't know if it was when she was on her show, when she was on our show, or if it was a dear reader question that she asked, but I know we talked about it. Her questioning if haunted, if we thought haunted would come back as like a rock version, Mm -hmm. maybe, you know, and like better than revenge is very angsty. Like, is that kind of the type of like, punk rock that's going to be these songs like are they going to be more I feel like electric touch could definitely be more like upbeat I don't know I don't know about castles crumbling though they said haunted and then I kind of think like now I'm like oh maybe and they can have that vibe like Mm -hmm. a haunted vibe like Mm -hmm. loud but not in like the upbeat sense more of like powerful okay Um, I have that one Paramore song that I'm thinking of, but I don't remember the name. And it's, is it Misery Business? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's Decode, I think it's called. Um, um, that's like the vibe I'm thinking of, like what it could be. Um, I'm yeah. trash, and I have to say that my Paramore knowledge ends at Misery Business. So, no, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Is anybody surprised? Like, let's be real. But yeah, I could totally see, I guess, Castle's crumbling. Um, When Emma falls in love, hello, like, who the heck is Emma? A lot of people have been saying that it's actually Emma Stone. And she recently commented, like, on her long-term friendship with Taylor, Mm -hmm. saying, like, oh, we we met, like, in 2008 or 2009. So it kind of makes sense here. And I think that was, like, around the time that Emma Stone was filming Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Oh, my God. (sighs) Stop it. Yeah. So people are thinking that maybe it's, like, a little bit about their love story. (gasps) I always really liked them together. So the 1989 song, You Are In Love, she wrote it about Jack Antonoff and um, the girl from Girls. I can't remember her name right now. They Lena Dunham. Yes. So Jack Antonoff and Lena Dunham like dated for like a super long time. And what someone told me unverified was that that You Are In Love was about um, them and their like love relationship. Um mm-hmm. And I freaking love that song. I think it's so beautiful. Like, I can't even listen to it sometimes unless I'm in the mood to listen to it because it's, like, just so, like, overwhelming. So if if it's about Emma and Andrew Garfield, who I was effing obsessed with when Spider-Man came out and they were, like, dating and it was so beautiful, I can't imagine how good that song is going to be. Ooh, true. Good point. Okay, so... Still on the topic of Speak Now TV and the vault tracks. So I don't know if you guys know or you know the, the, that typically when Taylor is releasing a Taylor's version album, she kind of makes the release of the vault track names like a little puzzle for Swifties. Um, so she basically unlocks a vault and it's like a word scramble kind of thing. And you have to figure out the titles. This time it was taken away from us. So yeah. Taylor had to preemptively, and a lot of people were actually thinking, sorry, sidetrack. Um, so there was this whole thing with the Lavender Hayes music video that there was a number 13 over Nashville and a number 13 over Detroit. So mm-hmm. we obviously got the Speak Now TV announcement in Nashville. And some people are like, okay, that's what the 13 was for. And then there was some speculation that there might be something happening in Detroit because of the 13 over Detroit in the music video as well. It's when the weatherman has like the background and it shows the two 13s. So what I was saying was that some people were speculating it could be a 1989 release, but then people are thinking now that it might have actually been when Taylor was going to release the vault scramble for speak now TV. But this man um, in France actually leaked the back cover of speak now which is how we found out the name like it was on twitter actually i saw it i remember it was like kind of blurry and i was like what is that and then taylor released the actual back cover and was like these are the vault tracks whatever but it's because of that like somebody took away the opportunity for us to have the scramble so not only did he leak that photo he stole 10 copies of the vinyl and was selling them on the streets of france So according to Vulture in an article, ironically titled Better Than Revenge, this employee um, stole 10 copies of Speak Now Taylor's version from a warehouse in France and was arrested and sentenced to eight months in prison. 
So you mess with Taylor Swift and they're going to throw your booty in jail. He allegedly mm-hmm. tried to sell the 10 copies online. Guys, he was selling them for 25 euros, which is $27.15 in America, US dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like man's obviously knows nothing like he knew enough to be like oh i'm gonna snag these like vinyls but didn't even know that it's literally like the pre-orders 38.99 sir oh my god so and once he sold two because people were like oh heck yeah he raised the prices to 50 euros so i guess he was like gotta jump on that um mm-hmm. so he was sentenced to eight months in prison and he's actually been convicted 24 times before I know. Isn't that tea? Eight eight out of the 10 vinyls have been recovered, but it's not entirely clear on like what happened to those that purchased them. Like if the French police came knocking on their door and they were like, give us the vinyl back or they were like, pay a fee, you know, like, I don't know what happened to them. And like, it's kind of like sus on them too. Like, what are you doing? Black market buying Taylor Swift's album that hasn't released yet. Like, what were you going to do with that, sir? I don't understand how he was able to come by these. Mm -hmm. So, so when I saw the picture of the back of the vinyl before, like the picture is super shady. Like it literally looks like this man, like took it out of the box and he was like, I'm about Mm -hmm. to get caught. Got to snap a pic of the back. But the picture that I saw, it had a sticker on it that said made in France. So I'm assuming that this specific warehouse is where they're being produced. Mm-hmm. or a good amount of them are being produced something like maybe one of the specific pressings is being produ- produced there interesting yeah and then someone who bought it leaked whatever maybe whatever picture they received of- maybe yeah yeah or he leaked it himself to you know i don't know um but it it looks to me or seems to me that mm-hmm. he w- he was a temp worker right at this warehouse so I'm sure he's working at the warehouse and like maybe it's a shipping warehouse and they told him like, oh, we're, we just got a shipment of the vinyls or like, oh, package up these vinyls kind of thing. And he just like snagged 10 off the top of the box thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Wow. Oh. What Super craziness. Crazy. I know, yeah. but I'm glad that like they're actually doing. I was honestly really surprised to see because I had heard like, obviously, I saw the picture floating around of like the leaked. Mm-hmm the leaked Volk tracks. Um, I didn't know that he had stolen 10 vinyls, but like, I'm really happy to see that they actually did something about it. Right. For sure. Yeah. I think it, I don't know when I read the story, it just reminded me of everything else that's been going around, you know, with, with the Eras tour, with the album releases, you know, people uh, thinking about the vinyls, like for, um, record store day you know people buying up so many records like multiple people in the same party like the same family like when we went to get records like buying up the records to do what you know you have to think that there are people there that don't have the best intentions and are gonna you know raise the price which we already saw you know as we're leaving line people bought records and jacked at the price like crazy yeah um People reselling tour merch. So it's just, you know, a trend that's going to stick around whenever there's something new that drops, you know, someone's going to take it and run with it, you know? It's again, that that, like ripping off Swifty thing. Like we know all the, the, the women in America right now are all about Taylor Swift. So let's see everything that we can do to like make a dime off of it. Like, no, the person that needs to be making a dime off of the amount of money that I'm spending is Taylor Swift. Right. Right. Like when is it going to stop? Okay. Moving on. So this one is a fun story. It's funny because I had actually read about it previously and I was watching the local news today, local (laughs) literally local 10 news and they had it as a story a segment that taylor swift is helping the economy so according to people the eras tour could possibly generate 4.6 billion dollars for the u.s economy Ooh, yeah fans are said to be spending an average of $1,300 to uh, to attend the Eras Tour, which um, is a combination of tickets, travel, and of course, the, you know, 
iconic Eras Tour outfits. And I just have to say, I'm glad that we are not average. (laughs) (laughs) We are above average in the worst way possible. Yep. Unfortunately. But one of the big things that they were saying in the story is that pretty much every single city that Taylor Swift is performing the Eras Tour in is bringing people to see the show because obviously we know she's not in like, it's different from her other tours in the sense that like when she's come to Florida, she's she'll do like Tampa, Orlando and Miami. This time she came to Florida and only went to Tampa. Right. Mm -hmm. So even though it's still in our state, we have to drive all of that. We have to book hotels. We have to book all of this. And like, I was thinking of LA too. Like we're literally taking a flight from where we live to spend a week in LA. Like it's crazy. It is crazy. A thousand three hundred dollars to attend the Eras tour, like. Okay, so before Eras tour, did you guys ever think that you'd be spending this much or however much was spent for a Taylor concert? I would say personally, yes, because we had the discussion before this, and when we we were going to do it for Loverfest, right? We spent. Probably for Loverfest, we weren't going to make the 1300 Maybe if you really, like, if we spent a long time in Boston, we we could have gotten there, right? But we were pretty frugal with our tickets. Like, I think we picked something that was like $140 as a ticket. We tried to get the cheapest ticket closest that we could get. Um, and then we would have done the flights, the transportation, all of that. So we we might have gotten the 1300 but i know for the eras tour we went in like guns blazing saying we're gonna spend at least or around 500 dollars on a ticket so i feel like we always knew this concert was going to be expensive kind of thing and then like well so like thinking about like helping the economy which I love it when we say we're helping the economy because I work in marketing and I'm like, need the economy to be great. So keep doing it. (laughs) Um, I feel like the answer is yes. Like not as far as tickets, like it's literally like, uh, I was delusional and, um, me and my friend Megan, we were like, we're going to do a couple's trip. We're going to go to Arizona. We're going to go hiking. The boys can go golfing while we get ready for the concert. And like, we're going to have like this entire vacation planned out and like see Taylor Swift because we're like, it's fine. Like we're going to get tickets. It's not a big deal. Ticketmaster is amazing. Lies. Um, but so I think with that notion, yes, because obviously you have to book your flight and you'd book a hotel. We're going to stay at some golf hotel. You spend more money. Um, but like in that aspect, if it was like Miami, like if I knew for a fact she was going to be coming to Miami and I could spend like $500 on a ticket and not do anything else, then I would stay there. Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like that aspect, but I, I actually was really excited when they announced the tour for eras. Cause I was like, Oh my God, it would be so fun to go watch a concert in a different city. Cause I've only ever done it in Miami or like West Palm or Tampa. Um, so yeah, I thought that would have been really exciting. And then I got pregnant and I'm a brat and didn't go to Tampa. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like that you bring that up though, the the appeal of like having to travel to see the concert, because I think that was something that at first we thought like at first we were like, oh man, no Miami. And then we were like, oh dang, no Charlotte, because we can't go see you know, Eras tour with Tosh, like we can't just figure that out. So we're like, okay, we have to make a trip out of it. And then we're like, okay, this is fun. We're definitely going to make a trip out of it. And then we were like, oh crap, we didn't get tickets. What are we going to do now? And then we were like, oh my God, we got tickets. Now we have to figure out how the heck we're going to get to LA and make a trip out of this because we bought our tickets without even like, it was kind of like, Samantha was in a queue. I don't even know what day you were in, in Q4. I don't, I just got in whatever day. I was like, you know what, Tuesday, people don't really go to a concert on a Tuesday. I'm going to get in here and see if we get lucky. That's how we got the tickets. But then we were like, wait a minute, we have to plan an entire trip halfway, <laughs> not even halfway across the country, literally on the other okay. side of the country and figure it out so that we can attend a concert on a Tuesday. 
Mm -hmm. I was going to bring that up because of the nature of the chaos with the ticket experience. I didn't even have any concept of money or any financial decisions. If it was in the the shopping cart or ticket master, it was being purchased. I could not (laughs) consider if something was expensive or not because my brain just wasn't there, which I feel like is such a strategy like on the sellers. Yeah. A hundred percent because like, like, especially with the way that they toggled the VIP on and off. So I think because we had been in the queue for a whole day before we kind of knew already that we were like, there was a possibility that we were going to get suckered into the VIP pricing. And I think for the Capital One presale, we got in for New York, which is originally the show that we were going to go to. Um, I feel like we've told you guys a million times that we were going to be in New York and we were supposed to see Getaway Car Live. But I digress. Over it. Yeah. I remember that we kept getting the Karma is my boyfriend package. That's mm. the one. And we just couldn't check out like that. We would get the tickets and then they would disappear, disappear, disappear. So we we're like, OK, if we get VIP, we have to be prepared to spend the money. And we had had serious talks like, okay, $500. Like, I think that's the most I can make it. Like we're going to be squeezing, you know, looking for pennies in the couch cushions at that (laughs) point. And then we ended up getting the highest price VIP ticket kind of because like it was nothing else to do. Like there was no other option. It was either that or like we kind of knew at that point, like if we didn't get tickets at the Capital One sale, our journey was probably over. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was insane. But I you mean, you know what? We did it for our country. Yeah. We, first of all, we did it for the icon, the economy, the I- <laughs> icon. <laughs> We did it for the economy. We did it to help um, our one sir, Joe Biden. You know, we're giving back. We're helping the tourism industry in Los Angeles, the Disney tourism industry, the universal tourism industry. You know, we're just we are really hitting the tourism industry hard and we are proud to represent another state going into California and say we are here to help you. I love that. California. <laughs> I'm going to get off the plane with a sign that says, I am here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to say, My tourism dollars equals California happiness. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, but speaking of the Eras tour and um, money making, Taylor Swift is expected to earn more than $10 million each night each night of the heiress tour from ticket sales alone this is still the same people article that we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. so i i mean i like i can believe it just because i'm sure she even if the ticket is like sold on a resale site she makes profit off of that right or does she just make it off the initial purchase oh you're saying the second transaction of a ticket yeah Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like it depends on whether or not she has contracts with like StubHub and which I can see her doing. I just don't don't know what the logistics behind that are. Yeah, I don't know how that works either. If any of you guys are listening and you actually do know um, how that works, let us know. Because I'm curious to know if like, because if a ticket is being sold, like people are reselling and bu- and purchasing, like it's not just on the resellers. It's on the people who are purchasing tickets at $10,000 a piece. Like, does Taylor Swift see a dime of that money or like, does it all go to StubHub kind of thing or like this, the reseller, you know what I mean? I think the answer might be no. Cause I'm thinking about um, like we are Dolphins season ticket holders. We can resell our tickets like within the app, but we make the money. The majority, back. Yeah. But you don't make the full money back a cut of whatever you sell. Unless you're doing it like, I'm selling my ticket to Samantha and Samantha's giving me money directly. Mm-hmm. A portion of that, at least fees or something goes to yeah. StubHub SeatGeek. So I wonder if she sees any of those. It's a good question. She does have a, she does have something with SeatGeek though, because some of the stadiums, some of the stops on the airs tour were tickets sold through SeatGeek. Mm-hmm. So then for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll have to I'll have to do a little more research on that. Um, but I just wanted to bring up 
the fact that she is making this $10 million each night, whatever, amazing for her. And still, (laughs) even with all of that money that she's making, she continues to do her food bank donations across the cities of the Eras tour. So we talked about it in a previous episode. We kind of went in um, a little in depth because one of our followers shared an amazing story of how they were getting ready for the the donation and like all the things they did and all of that stuff. Um, But she continues to do it. So it's really nice to see that like she... All the people are saying like they won't disclose how much money she's giving, but they're saying that she's giving like hefty, hefty donations. So we love that, you know. Amazing. We love a queen who gives back, truly. And she's she's helping the economy and then helping the local community. I literally just pictured like the um the like bur- the Virgin Mary candles, but like with Taylor. Like <laughs> Taylor. I think they sell those on Etsy and like honestly. I want to say I think they sell them on Etsy because I know because I purchased them. I'm kidding. I don't have any. I don't have any, but I wouldn't put it past myself. So Christmas present done. (laughs) All right. Our last big story for today is that Latin American dates have officially been announced for the Eras tour. So I'm super excited to share today that Taylor Swift and Taylor Nation announced the Eras tour will be heading to Latin America and she's bringing on Sabrina Carpenter to join. Ooh. Yeah. We have to like, we're going to have to do an episode because I know my sister asked me the other day and I'm not sure if you know, but there's like this whole speculation of like Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo beef. Mm-hmm. Beef? Yeah. And like, obviously, um, yeah. And like, there's a whole theory of Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter. So it's like kind of Taylor taking right. a side. Uh, and I love Olivia Rodrigo. I was really hoping she was going to be on tour because I love Sour so much. Yes. Okay. I feel like I can take a few minutes to just like digress and just <laughs> share you what I to. know on the Olivia Rodrigo situation. Right. Um, the tea. So I had been wondering, I know that we had talked about it. Um, I think before Eras tour was announced or like before we knew who was opening, we were kind of like, oh my God, we hope it's Olivia. Mm -hmm. all of that stuff um and then olivia wasn't announced and i was like that's so weird but then people were like that's not that weird and i came across this tiktok video of somebody explaining that and then i as i like was watching the video i started realizing that the timeline kind of matched up but if you don't know olivia rodrigo's um freshman album you know sour came out a huge hit there were a few songs that were like you know very Taylor Swift vibe. She grew up a, a Swifty, somebody who loved Taylor Swift, the music, the tempos. Like as a musician, she really respected Taylor Swift. And as a person, she loved her as well. So I believe the song, um, what's that song? What's was the it name? Deja, of it? Vu? Deja Vu. Yes. I was like, I, it's that one song about that thing that you get. <laughs> Deja Vu. <laughs> <laughs> I think Olivia, um, like either sampled a piece of it or like lyrics inspired the song, something like that. Right. And Taylor and Jack Antonoff apparently made Olivia give Taylor Swift credit on the song. Mm, I remember this. And since that occurred, they're kind of like on the outs. There's like more things that like go deeper into it, but it's obviously all just speculation So I think the factual things to state here are when Fearless TV was coming out, literally Taylor sent a clip of the song uh, You Belong With Me and like merch to Olivia and Conan, Um, just like a bunch of stuff. And the Grammys, they took that iconic picture together. This was all like February through April 2021. The album Sour comes out May 2021. And then like that June or July is kind of when they were like, on the outs and since then we have literally never heard olivia mention taylor again like she didn't get any promo mm-hmm. for midnight nothing about the eras tour mm-hmm. yeah this is true and we were hoping to see olivia in la like i'm hoping she still loves taylor enough that she'll be at the eras tour and like we can see her in la but yeah and then now the whole thing because everybody thinks that sabrina carpenter and olivia hate each other because of joshua bassett 
And then right. Taylor Swift and Sabrina Carpenter are super besties now. <laughs> Do you think Olivia is, I don't want to say too big, but is she at opener level or beyond that? Like, what do you think? I think that if it was a smaller tour, like 1989, Red, Speak Now, maybe even Rep, Mm -hmm. she would be too big. Mm -hmm. But for Era's tour, I think she's the right fit because I compare her music to Gracie Abrams. And I think that she... And I love, I've been listening to the Gracie set list and I love it. I love all of the songs on it. Like on my Spotify, I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to her set list so I can actually learn the music. And I'm like, man, I love this song. Man, I love this song. Man, I love this song. And then all of a sudden it like goes back into my regular playlist. I'm like, hello, I was listening to that. And I had loved and listened to all of the um, like set list songs for Gracie. So you should Mm -hmm. check her out if you haven't already. Her music is actually really good. But I would compare it to Olivia's and I think, Gracie's set list is like five or six songs. Olivia could easily do five or six songs. Easily. Sure. Yeah. So, and speaking of Olivia, her um, new song, she has a single off her second album coming out June 30th. It's called Vampire, yeah. the song, not the album. I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I saw the promo picture. It looks like cool. I liked it. I was excited. Yeah. And then what people are saying, see, there's always something, my God, I can talk forever. Um, (laughs) The purple that she uses for the bandages to cover up like the vampire mark, they're saying like, I mean, everything in sour and like Olivia Rodrigo's purple. Okay. But like, they're like purple and it's the week before Taylor releases speak now, which is the purple album. Like they're definitely feuding. I'm like, Oh, wait, what? Come on. Like, sorry, I love Taylor. I love Speak Now. She did not invent the color purple. She doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> People reach it. People um, reach for everything. I feel like I could totally see, though, where maybe um, Olivia felt, like, bullied. And then, like, she, like, got really sad about it. I don't know. One, she obviously with her, like, music and her songs, she seems like a very emotional person. So I feel like if something was said or, like, she felt like she was forced to do something, she would easily really shut down from a situation just based on her music alone. I don't know her. I've never spoken to her. But um, that's what that's what I'm envisioning. It's, but, but so from the article, I thought that she had added Jack and Taylor Swift and then took it off. Is that, did I remember that correctly or no? I'll have to do more research on it, on exactly what happened. But I know that she was hurt by having to like, I think what happened is like, she wrote that song and then they were like, you have to add them. And she was hurt because she was like, that's my music. Like you're making me at like, it's inspired by them. But like, why do I have to add them? I made that song. Right. So it's just a toss up. Yeah, it's tough. And like, at the end of the day, like, I get what you're saying that Olivia is like clearly a very emotional person. Like we know it from her music, but at the same time, she's also a kid and she's Mm -hmm. very, very young in the industry. Right. So I think, I think that. Like she can be an emotional person, but then we also have to remember she's a kid and she's young in the music industry. So I'm sure she was hurt by whatever happened. And it kind of stinks. Like imagine like, it's like pulling back the curtain and seeing the wizard of Oz. Right. And her whole life, like imagine us who we've been obsessed with Taylor Swift forever. And then tomorrow we get like pushed into the same world as her. And then something happens where like you look at her different. It just stinks. Mm hmm. That's so true. Yeah, even thinking about if it is true that there is some underlying beef, like choosing Sabrina Carpenter as an opener, like, I don't know. That's that's got to sting. That's rough. I'm not saying anything is true. Well, we don't even know if the Olivia and Sabrina thing is true either, right? right. It's just all There's fan just so speculation. Much. Yeah. yeah. It's a well, lot of layers. In, even yeah. in her songs, she's like... I feel like they she like hit a point where she was like saying like she knows that like 
Sabrina's not a bad person. I don't, this is my interpretation of her album. My husband loves Olivia Rodrigo. We've listened to her album a million times. King, as he should. <laughs> he also commented on like one of her recent posts before she came out with the single, like announcing the single saying like, when are you coming out with new music? <laughs> Boy, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like, I don't know, obviously like the media loves to like hype it up. Yeah. And put women against each other. But um, either way, you know, I'm proud of her. We're always happy to see somebody young in the industry getting a chance and like, There's nothing like, again, being handed like the golden ticket from Willy Wonka himself. And this is it for Sabrina Carpenter. So I hope that she really goes places. Although, you know, the same thing kind of happened with Camila Cabello and like her last album was huge and like she hasn't gone on tour or anything. So like that album was like my top album of the year in 2022. And like I never got to see it live or anything. So that kind of stinks. But I digress. Going back to Latin America stuff, um, Sabrina Carpenter and Taylor Swift are heading on the Eras tour um, starting August 24th and going through November 26th. So Thanksgiving is the 23rd this year, and she has a show 24, 25, and 26. Wow. Yeah, so she's going to be like gobbling up turkey in New York and then like jet setting back to Latin America. (laughs) The next day. Wait, I think she's actually going to eat turkey and like potatoes. (laughs) Okay, but wait, she actually can eat turkey because turkey is super lean. She probably just can't eat stuffings and potato stuffing and potatoes. Oh my gosh, it's literally like the best part of Thanksgiving. Like, let's not even lie, it's the side. I love how we're dissecting what she's going to be eating on the holiday. <laughs> With or without the cranberry sauce? I don't know. Too much sugar, Samantha. She has to perform. Okay. She has to perform the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Let the girl live. Yeah, I'm with her. I mean, eat I hope she does. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. And like, I'm yeah. all about eating all day long on Thanksgiving. So I hope that she gets to do that and gets to do it in the best way possible, whatever is better for her health. But mm-hmm. anyway, she will be performing at venues in Mexico City, Mexico, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Actually, that's it. I was like ready to add on like three yeah. weeks. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Um, But her stop in Mexico City will be the first time Taylor plays four consecutive nights of the Eras tour. So she literally goes on one, two, three, back to back four nights of that three hour show. Is she okay? You know, I'm tired for her. Do you guys think there's going to be like any big set list changes or anything? I just wanted to say like being in latin america i'm i hope like along with sabrina parmenter she also brings out like a latin artist like i thought like how fun would it be if like there was an appearance by bad money you know they had their whole little thing at the vmas it was vmas right was it the grammys it was the grammys but bad bunny is not mexican argentinian or brazilian i know but he's latin she can she can bring out peso pluma in mexico He's like the big, he's the big like Mexican performer right now. I can't believe you know that. Like I'm very impressed. Adrián is very obsessed with Beso Pluma. That is the only reason why I know that. <laughs> um, also like R- Rosalia would be That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. Maybe she will because typically these, the America shows have two openers So I wouldn't put it past her, you know, maybe she has a little tricks up her, some tricks up her sleeve. Um, Mm -hmm. But that being said, if you want more information on the Latin American dates and tour and all of that, head to taylorswift.com forward slash tour for more info. And like always follow us on social media for real time updates. So those are our big Taylor Swift news stories for today. But before we wrap up, I kind of want to ask you guys now that speak now, TV, Taylor's version, not television, has been announced. (laughs) What are you most excited for? Um, Do you think there's going to be music videos? I know that some people have kind of touched on the subject that they kind of want Better Than Revenge to be updated um, lyrics so that it's not so like tearing down kind of thing and more like maybe her master's. Do you think it should be updated? Like the integrity of the way we've kept all the other albums, you know, I think 
personally, I think Speak Now should be treated the same way, but I'm curious to see what you guys think. Talk to me. The only thing that I would change from Better Than Revenge, and I love that song. I'm obsessed with it. I think it's a banger. I don't want to change it. But if I like had to pick up something to change from it, it's when she's like, now go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I laugh. I mean, it's like, I don't like, as I'm saying, I don't yeah. actually want her to change anything, <laughs> but I literally laugh every single time. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. That is yeah. literally the best part of the song. Remember that I said that Speak Now is my favorite album. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Ouch. What do you think, Sammy? Honestly, I, I understand the want to change. Um, you know, portions of that song. But I also think that song was such a perfect, uh, I don't know, just a perfect moment, perfect capture of who she was in that moment, her attitude, you know, her voice, her thinking. If you have a problem with it and you want things to be changed, I think it's also like at who she was at that time. Now you're directing it at the person. So I I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. I'm not really sure. I don't even know if any of that made sense because I'm still trying to wrap it in my brain. But I I don't know. I get what you're saying because it's like if you have a problem with the message of the song, then you kind of have a problem with who Taylor Swift was at that time. And like, I think just like I said, kind of the integrity of the re-records and all of that stuff is or like not the integrity, the purpose of the re-records is keeping the integrity of the original albums and switching lyrics on the songs kind of takes that away. And like the whole purpose is for Taylor to get her masters back and to to get the ownership of those songs. And if that means claiming songs and owning songs the way that they were originally written, that's kind of what it means. Like, I'm, I'm sorry that you don't necessarily agree with it. And like, you know, obviously things are a lot different now than they were back then, but I don't think that Taylor Swift still means what she said about who she said it about. Like if her and Joe Jonas are fine, I'm sure her and Chelsea Handler are fine. And like, you know, it's kind of bury the hatchet, walk away. Like the song doesn't need to be about anyone specifically anymore. Exactly. And also, I think, like, obviously, we don't want to promote women tearing down women, but sometimes someone sucks and they did something terrible to you and you want to say bad things about them. And I think that that's completely, especially in music, like, it's you're so just like, expressing your feelings and emotions. I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that goes back with kind of what I was saying that the song doesn't necessarily have to be about one person anymore. Right. Like we might've known who the original song was written about, but we know that when Taylor Swift is re-recording this album, she's just re-recording the song. Those feelings are not still there. Like, and, and people now don't know. Who it yeah, was exactly. Then. That's just it, you know? So I kind of hope that she keeps it the same as she's kept the other albums. Like I don't, I don't want that to change. It's one of my favorite songs on the album and I would hate to have to relearn the lyrics. (laughs) True. I think the whole point is her trying to regain her voice and the voice that was taken from her, the words that were taken from her, like you said, trying to gain back ownership. I think it would be going against that if she were to change the words that she wrote years ago. You know, the whole point is just to give it back to the world what what was hers in the first place. So we want it how it was. Yeah, it's like if she changed Dear John now to like, mm-hmm. if she had to change his name because she. Or didn't hey, want Stephen. To, yeah, like it's the same thing. Right, and she doesn't <laughs> even name drop in this song. So yeah. Um. Well, speaking of Dear John, I hope she makes a bomb ass music video for dear john i don't know if she will but that would be amazing and a 10 minute version 15 (laughs) dear john is already pretty long i think it's like seven minutes long there's like some long songs on speak now because i think last kiss is super long as well dear john is her second longest song 
after all too well 10 minute version yeah Ooh, tea i want to see how long last kiss is because that is a really long song i really want a music video because i remember listening to speak now and seeing like back to december and i just really wanted more <laughs> I really loved that album, but I wanted more visuals because I loved how she was doing her videos at the time. So I would love if she like kind of kept up with, you know, that same style and gave us like the fairy tale, fairy tale. style. Yeah, I just I really liked that from her. That's what, you know, really was my favorite part of Speak Now. So I'm hoping we get that this time. Um, Last Kiss is six minutes and somewhere between three and eight seconds. Damn. Yeah, it's okay. a long it's a long song. That um, is. The streets, by the way, are saying that there's an enchanted music video. I don't know, I don't have credit to give on who I read it from. I saw it on Twitter. Um, I just have that information to share. Do with it what you will. But the streets are saying there's an enchanted music video coming out. And we still have that those that I'll picture. Cry. We have those pictures yes. that, that music video with the speak now said and the 13 and you know the speak yes. now outfit. Yes. So we don't know. I'm I'm guessing now we thought it originally was a karma music video. So I'm guessing now it's a speak now something. Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen the video like Taylor Lautner made? <sighs> yes. Yeah. Where he was like praying for, for John. Yeah. Okay. But I really want like, it would be so good if she did kind of like how she did with Miles Teller and his wife for the, um, Mm-hmm. I bet you think about me music video. Yes. yes. Something similar with Taylor Lautner and Taylor Lautner because his wife is. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, that's funny. But like a music video with them. I would love that so much. That would, would be, be so, so good. Cute. Well, Taylor Lautner, man, man version. <laughs> he the is man. rumored to be in this music video that we don't know much about. Um, so I don't know where he fits in there, but we do know that he's from the Speak Now era. Joey King was set to be in this music video as well. She was in the Mean music video. So she's mm-hmm. also from Speak Now era. So it's definitely a Speak Now music video. I'm kind of curious to see where all of these aspects of Speak Now, the album, meet in one video. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder where it fits in there. So that's going to be really interesting to see. I love that he's coming back into it. I feel like he's a good sport with everything and not really a lot of dirt on him. I feel like they, they're pretty like chill between each other. So I love to see him just. Yeah. He's an unproblematic King. Yeah, exactly. He is. We love our shark boy. (laughs) Shark boy. Oh my God. I knew him more as Jacob, but um, (laughs) what's up Chica. um, What was I going to (laughs) say? He's like one of the Taylor Swift boyfriends who had like the best send off, you know, like back to December is about like how she hurt him. And like, I think they have a a very good and solid relationship. I remember Taylor Lautner, the woman, um, I think she said on her podcast or something or like a radio show, something like that, that she really wanted tickets to the Eras tour. And Taylor Lautner, the man was like, oh, like, I'll just call Taylor up. Like, don't worry. Like. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> it it makes me laugh because I think of the 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 Chris Jenner audio. What would happen if you just call Taylor up? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited to see what's to come. And like the best part is we don't have that much time left. Like mm-hmm. in terms of podcast, we have one more episode before the release of Speak Now Taylor's version. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> What an exciting time. I love it. I love it. Songs. Amazing. Yes. And speaking of coming up on the Tea Swift Sisters podcast, we have some exciting news to share with you guys. Um, On Thursday, July 6th, we're going to be having a Speak Now TV release party on Instagram Live. So we will have more information for you soon. I think definitely in the next episode, um, we'll be talking a little bit more about what you can expect, how to join, what we're going to do, you know, all of that stuff. But we just wanted to get the word out so you can mark your calendars, spritz some of that Wonderstruck by Taylor Swift perfume, you know, dust it off the shelf a little bit, spritz it. I have it. 
<laughs> no, I have it too. I have a mini version. Thanks to Mia. She found it for me. And then I have the originals in their box with the lotions and ditch your plans to celebrate with us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I think that wraps up our show for today. So Titi, it was so nice having you on. Thank you for joining and filling in for Tosh. Oh my God. I didn't even mention guys. Obviously this Tosh was not on. Today's episode. This always happens. This is why she should not miss Natasha. Oh, Tosh, if you're listening back, we missed you today, but it was really nice to have you on, Didi. Um, We loved picking your brain and your insight on Speak Now. So thank you. Thanks for and having me. And the TV versions. <laughs> yeah, and, and learning about the, the apparent uh, scrapped Taylor Swift <laughs> Speak Now television set. <laughs> before before we log off guys thank you so much for listening to today's episode if you have a second a literal second of your day please make sure to rate our podcast based on how you enjoyed it um so rate our podcast and make sure that you're following us on social media to stay up to date with all things taylor swift and the Eras tour plus social media is where we have super fun interactive polls conversations all that stuff with you guys and usually where um i share news as it comes in so follow us on socials for more fun we are at T Swift Sisters on Twitter and at T Swift Sisters Pod on TikTok and Instagram. That'll do it. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Bye.